After busting out of a tournament one night in Vegas, I walked over to the Aria, the casino where Eric was about to resume his own competition. I started telling him all about how unlucky I had gotten, but before long, he cut me off. Do you have a question about how you played the hand? He asked me. Well, not really, I said. Then I don't want to hear it, he responded. Bad beats are a really bad mental habit. You don't want to ever dwell on them. It doesn't help you become a better player. In poker, a bad beat happens when you lose, despite being the overwhelming statistical favorite to win. Most of the time, a bad beat comes down to simple bad luck, which initially I thought was worth venting about. But it turns out that focusing on bad beats is actually a surefire way to generate more bad luck. If you're wallowing in your misfortune, you fail to see the things you could be doing to overcome it. Your play will begin to suffer, other players will capitalize, and suddenly you've got more bad luck to mope about. This happens in real life too. If you're regularly complaining about your misfortunes and bad luck, people may find it difficult to be around so much negativity. As a result, your social network and all its latent opportunities could begin to dwindle. Similarly, if you're fixating on past personal or professional failures, you may refuse to seize a promising new opportunity, thinking that it could never possibly work out. In this way, you start to generate a debilitating cycle of bad luck that continues into the future. Instead, the key is to forget about bad beats and bring your full focus to the here and now. Eric told me on our first day together that lesson one was to pay attention. The more focus you bring to a game, the more you maximize your skill edge before the bad beat can even happen. That way, you minimize the times when you have to leave your fate to the cards. One of the most often cited quotes about luck comes from Louis Pasteur, who said, chance favors the prepared mind. What people often forget, though, is that the full statement is actually quite different. Where observation is concerned, chance favors only the prepared mind. We tend to focus on that last part, the prepared mind, but that first part is equally crucial. If you're not observing closely to begin with, no amount of preparation is enough. We see the truth of this statement in a study conducted by psychologist Richard Wiseman. Wiseman asked people who considered themselves lucky or unlucky to look through a newspaper and count the number of photographs. The self-described unlucky took about two minutes, whereas the self-described lucky took a few seconds. The task was identical, but the self-identified lucky people were much more likely to notice something the others missed. On page two, in huge letters, were the words, stop counting. There are 43 photographs in this newspaper. Prepared mind or not, in the absence of observation, it matters little. In short, you're not lucky because more good things are actually happening. You're lucky because you're alert to them when they do. By turning our attention away from bad beats and toward good decision-making in the here and now, we're sure to encounter more good luck than ever before.